uh, in the Women's World Cup. It's called the Women's World Cup. We have a new superstar, the Canada midfielder Quinn. Goes by the name Quinn. Wasn't the name that Quinn was born with. But Quinn has been heralded, celebrated this week as the first transgender non-binary footballer to play in the Women's World Cup. To which my response when I read this was, hang on a second, hang on. Is she, is she a but is she, they, whatever, is she a biological male? Tra no, no, it turned out she's a biological not, female. Not she, so. So what is she? Well, whatever they'd like to go. Let's go. Well, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just to be clear, just to be clear. I think, oh, Quinn, I, I haven't asked a they question. and Quinn. I haven't asked, I haven't asked a question yet. She's a, they, they. she, is a transgender non-binary. Mm -hmm. What is that? Well, How can you be transgender Quinn, and non-binary? Because that's what they are. I but thought non-binary meant you were neither you know one what, nor the you other. You know what Quinn also is? Is an Olympic medalist. No, hang on, medalist. hang on, sorry. I, so, thought, I thought transgender meant you, you literally... Okay. Male well, to female, female to male. Turns out the non-binary is not the same well, as transgender, I or it is. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I would say that's probably because they're not allowed to take the correct amount of testosterone because they are still playing in the women's team. And so I would assume no, they are saying they're non-binary. not testosterone. No, doesn't want to exactly, be exactly. That's what I'm saying. So Quinn I, doesn't want to be male. Because Quinn can't compete. Quinn is a Quinn female playing against testosterone. females, but now doesn't want to identify because as a woman. Because you won't let her play on the male she's team. No, no, you're, the, on the male you're missing team. the point. She doesn't want to play on the male team. But she doesn't, she's not actually they trans... They Quinn might like no, to do that. No, Quinn wants to be a an ex-woman, Alex. Who, so hang on, Paula. Who's no, no. upset Paula, about Paula, this? Stop, stop being you, mean by interrupting. <laughs> I'm, coming to, I'm coming to Alex. Alex, I just want to get my head around this. She's a transgender, <laughs> non-binary ex-woman. So my question is, if you're no longer identifying as a woman, what are you doing playing in the Women's World Cup? Not my title. That is the official title of a tournament. She doesn't qualify... They, they don't qualify, even though there's only one of them. They don't qualify for the Women's World Cup because they used to be a woman, but now they don't want to be a woman. So now we have to call them they for being a transgender, even though they're non-binary, and they're still playing in the Women's World Cup, and we're all supposed to go, well done, Quinn, what a moment! What a moment! I'm but no one's quite sure. No one's yeah. quite sure what we're celebrating. Quinn. Alex, what change. are we celebrating? The rules change all the time. It's like we're bestowing upon people who have gender dysphoria some sort of magical, extra special power that normal people don't have. And I don't care, frankly, mm -hmm. how many scores have they, how many goals have they scored? Mm -hmm. You know, that's more interesting if you're a professional. Paula, why is somebody, why is somebody who doesn't profession? consider themselves a woman in the Women's World Cup? Explain to me. Because where else are they going to be able uh, to? In a trans or non-binary tournament? Uh, I, no I, don't, I don't see one. And uh, I certainly don't see one. I keep one being told there are millions... I keep being told there are millions of trans the people world around the world. Great, have your own tournament. So, Piers, if you and I want to set one up, then I'm I'm all for that. Swimming, you've just done it today. Fantastic. So, why don't we do that? Great. So, instead of being so angry... you accept they shouldn't be competing? No, I do not in, accept in that. In Quinn's case... No, I do not accept in that. In Quinn's you case... You asked me, what options did this person have? In Quinn? None was my answer. None. Uh, yes. No options did this person yes. have to perform on their wo Look at your on the world stage. Little faces. You both know this is such. No, crap. you want you do. to be angry, people. Look at your you faces. Don't need to. What you need to do? Why are you get not angry? Matches, Why are you not to angry to protect and applaud? Why don't you want to protect women? Why is it always left to me what? to protect the women? Women are right? protected. They're this? not. This Why person has gone and they've won an Olympic medal and now they are playing successfully. Doesn't want to be a woman. I don't see what the problem is. Doesn't want to be a woman. Hates the idea of being a woman. I don't know about hatred. There's stuff to themselves. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 my understanding is they've not had any sort of testosterone, so there's no biological. No, no, she's, she's a. She's a carry on playing in, in the sport. Yes, I don't care. Just stop but telling us all, all about to, your great moves to be a transgender, non-binary, whatever. Just get Nobody, on cares. With it. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Uh, welcome back to Piers Morgan Sense. So Pearl Davis is the self-styled anti-feminist influencer who's creating major buzz online with a contrarian view. She's appeared in a couple of debates on this show. It's called Uncensored After All. We welcome any honestly held opinions. But this week, she's facing a major backlash by posting a song titled Why Can't We Talk About the Jews, which she dedicated to far-right commentator Nick Fuentes before later deleting it. Why can't we talk about the... Without getting kicked off of you too Now I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy But I kinda wanna know why Now there's all these conspiracy theories 
the more they talk, I think maybe they're right. But I can't even listen to the convo. Well, Pearl joins me now, along with the New York uh, author and founder of End Jew Hatred, Brooke Goldstein, over in the States. All right, Pearl, you've come on the show a couple of times, right? We've had some spirited debates about mm -hmm. feminism and stuff like that, and I thought you've made some good points and it's got lots of traction. Then I wake up the other day and I see this thing that's trending involving you doing this song. And I couldn't really believe what I was watching. I didn't know... Why, why did you find, you find it funny? Huh? Did you find, you find it funny? I mean, you know the backlash to it. I mean, you, you deleted it. You obviously thought you shouldn't have posted it. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? Genuine uh, question. <laughs> I mean, the point was more about cancel culture and people getting kicked off of social media. If you finished the song, mm. it was more about, like, you can't talk about this topic without being canceled by the left and the right. I don't really have a strong opinion either way. It, it was kind of just, like, tongue in cheek. Um, I didn't really expect it to get that crazy. Um, I also, it wasn't dedicated to anyone. I don't know why they say that, but that's not true. I mean, Nick Fuentes <laughs> is a white supremacist. He's a, a Holocaust denier. Uh -huh. uh, he said afterwards that uh, you had dropped a diss track on the Jews, <laughs> um, which he clearly took to be something which was, you know, mocking Jewish people talking about, I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy, but I want to know why. What, what do you well, want to know why? Well, it was more like, why can't we talk about it? It, it wasn't like You talked about the more the conspiracy other. theories you've heard about Hitler and the Holocaust, I'm, presumably. I'm a fan of conspiracy theory. Like, you know, people think I'm part of the CIA. There's a whole conspiracy thing online. And, you know, I'm not for, like, silencing it either way. The point of the song isn't, like, I really have an opinion on the matter. It's more... I don't think we should ban people off of social media. So far so that I don't even, like, I think it should be illegal to ban anybody off of social media unless they're inciting violence. That was the point of the song. Um, I'm not really, it, it was more like tongue in cheek. But just to be clear, what are the conspiracy theories surrounding Hitler, which you feel I the more you hear them, the more well, you're interested in them? Well, I don't know because I can't hear them. <laughs> Huh? I don't well, you know, know the ones. You know the ones that Nick Fuentes. Well, I wasn't with. even talking about Nick. I was thinking of Ye, to be no. honest. I don't know why they put that Nick was the inspiration for that song. I was thinking of Ye. Um, you are aware of the big backlash to this and the deep upset from I, Jewish community. I certainly am now. I just posted that song and I woke up and I was like, article, article, article. I was like, golly. Right, but are you this sorry? Is crazy. Um, you know, I, I think that. Like, what it, my whole point was that cancel culture is wrong. I am not speaking one way or the other about the issues. My question is, why are we canceled about talk, for talking about certain topics? So you would allow Holocaust deniers to have space on social media to promote Holocaust as... denial to millions of people. You have two million people who subscribe mm -hmm. to your YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big audience well, of people. Well, I'm, I'm not at two million yet. I'd like to be. Right, but you have a lot of people that follow you on various social media platforms. Yeah. You put a video like that up, and there are going to be some impressionable young minds going, hang on, what's Pearl saying? Adolf Hitler? Not saying he's a good guy, but I want to know why. The more conspiracies I, I, theories I hear, the more I have to think about it. But I took that to mean. I took that to mean that you agree with well, but, Fuentes. Why, like did, that. why did you cut off the end of the end of the song? Mm. I said. But we can't even have the conversation. What is the conversation without, you want to without have? Without being cancelled by the, the left and the right. But what the is point the, is any Pearl. speech. No, no, I Pearl. think it's not any, any speech. speech. It's not any speech. What is the conversation about Hitler <laughs> and conspiracy theories and the Holocaust that you want to have? I don't want to have any conversation. My lane is feminism. That's what. Well, I'm you're singing about, about Adolf Hitler. Can I? Can I? Can I finish? Yeah, but you are singing about okay, Hitler. Okay. Okay. So you do want to have that conversation. I want anybody that wants to speak on social media to be able to speak about what they want to talk about, including Holocaust without denial, without getting banned. Whatever they want to talk about, including Holocaust denial. If they want to talk about that, as long as they're not inciting violence, I think people. Of course, they're inciting I mean, violence. They're inciting a hatred look at, look at. I think that Jewish people. So Welcome back to Piers Morgan on Censor. Just stop oil protests have become a national. Irritation, targeting all the things that we love, like sporting events, flower shows, and so on. One of their latest processions was so delightfully met by counter protesters staging an intervention. And the group, Just Stop Peeing Everyone Off, also infiltrated a Just Stop Oil banquet. And gloriously, they had balloons which flew around, which had alarms blaring off. Take a look. <laughs> 
Oh, so fabulous, isn't it? Listening to them all getting annoyed and irritated, just like they get to irritate and annoy us. So who is behind this and is there more to come? Well, you'll be unsurprised to hear, perhaps, if you're regular viewers of the show, that it's my old friends Joshua Peters and Archie Manners who join me now with the world's top pranksters. Uh, great effort, chaps. I, I was roaring you on. When I first heard about the first one, I thought, that's got the mark of my boys. And sure enough, <laughs> it was you two. Um, <laughs> You've taken me by surprise. I didn't think you'd be a fan of it. So <laughs> I'm really relieved that you liked it. I love it because they are so annoying. And in my view, the manner of their protests has been completely backfiring because the public are just seeing people setting out to deliberately ruin their day-to-day -day life. That's not how you bring people on the agenda with you, right? No, not at all. I think we can all agree that climate change is a very serious issue yeah. and we all know that something needs to be done. But when you're protesting and campaigning for things, you need to bring people with you and Just Stop Oil are having the exact opposite effect on the British public. And what you don't need to do is have a sucking great big party on Sunday. I mean, that doesn't right. help. That does nothing to help the environment at all. It's just that there was a harp. There was a harpist, live music. They're all clinking their single-use cups. We heard today that just policing Just Stop Oil this year has cost over £7 million. Now, people are going through a cost-of-living crisis. £7 million to police these idiots who most of the time are doing idiotic things. I mean, the other day they were blockading a pregnant woman who was had a, a, a who then her boyfriend got into a fight with them. I didn't agree with the violence, but I understood why he was so defensive of his of his poor pregnant uh, partner. Another woman had, had a newborn baby in the in her car and couldn't take the baby wherever they were going to go. All this kind of thing is just like, to me, it's just moronic. It's not achieving anything. And we, in order to pull these pranks off, we had a mole inside, so we infiltrated their ranks and we followed them around for a day before we pulled any stunts. And part of the interesting was talking to the police men and women, who, mm. hundreds of them on Parliament mm. Square, policing this stuff. They don't want to be doing it either. No, like, no. And they're so respectful. Of course they don't. They've yeah. got better things to do, more Much important better. things to worry about. We all agree broadly with the calls. We just don't agree with the methodology. I don't think it's changing people's hearts and minds. Are you going to carry on doing these traps? I think we'll, we'll call it a day. I think we've proved our point. Um, look, you know... I don't think you should. I think you should keep... <laughs> yeah. it. Somebody has. Somebody has taken the Just Stop Peeing Off slogan and whacked it on so a website. You should the be everywhere they pop up annoying people. You should be annoying <laughs> well, them. Well, Piers, on that note, we've brought you a little present. <laughs> Thank Piers, you. your very I'm own. That, I just will stop. wear this proud. In fact, you know who I'm, you know I'm going to give this to? Uh, my, my eldest son is watching tonight. He's big fans of you two. He knows you two from the nightclub scene. Uh, and he's, no, no, we deny that. The and he's 30, he's 30 years old tomorrow, which makes me feel unbelievably old. So, Spencer, uh, if you're wondering what your present is, it's just arrived. <laughs> uh, and I know you'll love wearing this. You can take this to Ibiza where you're going tomorrow. <laughs> so, happy birthday for tomorrow, happy son. Happy birthday, Spencer. 30-year-old uh, son, my God. I'd never thought that day. He's really happen. panicked about it as well. Um, but I want him to join your group. I think they're a wonderful group to join. Uh, Chaps, well done. Thank you for restoring a little bit of counter-attack to his madness and doing it with your normal panache and humour, which is the key, I think. Uh, good to see you both. Thank you for having us, All the best. Really appreciate it. That's it from me. We're here up to you. Keep it uncensored. And remember, the key message tonight is this. Just stop peeing everyone off. Well, good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Ascended. Uh, we start the show with some very sad breaking news. The Irish music legend Sinead O'Connor has died at the age of just 56. She was a troubled and beautiful soul, fearless, uncompromising, shocking, courageous. She was a rebel at heart. She took on the Catholic Church. She used a primetime performance on US TV to stage a protest, even as everyone warned her it could ruin her career. Above else, though, she enchanted millions with a song that's known across the world and across generations. Few people can truly say their voice defined an era, but Sinead's did. Put simply, Nothing compared to the madness that we announced the passing of our beloved Sinead. Her family and her friends are devastated. And I'm sure that millions of people across the world will share that sentiment. Sinead, of course, led a very turbulent life. She always said her rebellious streak was driven by the abuse she'd suffered as a child and that music rescued her. It certainly unleashed a creative talent that made her world famous. She struggled with her mental health for many years and talked very openly and powerfully about that. And tragically, she lost her 17-year-old son, Shane, to suicide just 18 months ago. I had a number of exchanges with Sinead and interviews over the years. They were most definitely uncensored. This was the last time I interviewed her. Sinead, exactly. we go back a long way. We do. I used to write about you as a young pop writer. We used to lock horns, clash, blah, blah, blah. 
I never doubted your talent. I mean, the one thing that rose above all the controversies, all the stuff, was that you just had this wondrous voice. And to hear you now, if anything, even richer your voice, I think, than it was back then, right. it's a magical thing Thank to hear. I mean, at your heart, you're just a great singer, aren't you? Yeah, I think I was very young. I wasn't ready for the type of success, inverted commas, that happened. Do you know what I mean? I, mm. I wasn't really setting out to be a pop star, so I didn't really fit the mould. Mm. I was more of a punk. She was, and she was a unique talent, a unique character. Well, I'm joined now by RTE radio presenter from Ireland, Dave Fanning, who's interviewed Sinead multiple times. Dave, uh, very sad, this news. It really gave me a jolt when I read this just before I came on air. You knew Sinead very well. You interviewed her. She's an Irish music legend, of course. What is your uh, re reaction to this news tonight? Dreadfully sad. I mean, an, an Irish cultural legend as much as an Irish music legend. Obviously, it's the music that people would know her best by. I mean, she's got about 10 studio albums. She must have 30 collaborations with some of the biggest artists around. Obviously, she took productions of new pop songs mm. and they were really good. And with David Holmes, the, the Belfast musician, she had another one, an 11th one coming out. I don't know if it still will. I'm not sure. But it was the cultural impact that she had. I mean, she was self-deprecating. She was pragmatic, a very sharp observer. She was uncompromising and she had no regrets about anything at all. And she was an absolute icon to a certain generation of Irish people. And that generation now is anything between the ages of 20 and maybe 45 or 50. The older generation, they didn't necessarily like all the things she did. Tearing up the picture of the Pope on TV 25, I mean, 30 years ago was obviously something that ne didn't necessarily go down well with some people. But how prescient was she? Everything she was saying, every reason she did it came true 10 years later with the dreadful, dreadful um, revelations of just exactly how crazy the church was. Yeah, I mean, she was controversial. She was outspoken, but she spoke her mind. I always felt that it was sincere. You know, I had some great run-ins with her where she'd tear into me and the next thing we'd be drinking Guinness and she'd be smothering me in kisses and love. And she was like that. She was a contrarian figure. I think she liked rattling cages and she liked telling you what she really thought of you, whether it was good or bad. And so, you know, I, I feel very, uh, like I say, I, I feel very sad about this news. I also feel it probably, I don't want to guess here, but it probably can't be unconnected to the tragedy about her son who died only 18 months ago, of course, t taking his own yeah, life. I mean well, I don't want to be too sad all the time about something. And this is still like just kind of trying to sort of put this grief into some kind of um, perspective. But in some ways, she was a bit Piers Morgan. She was an agent provocateur in many ways. She really knew how to rattle people's cages and was able to stand up to whatever had to be said to her in terms of Sinead, you're wrong. She'd say, no, here's why I'm not wrong. And she was fun and she was great. She was very fearless and fragile often at the same time. No regrets. She did put herself into some very, very tough situations. And you kind of used to wonder and say, why is she doing this? The very first interview she did, she did with me on the radio back in 87 direction or whatever it was. And then the last thing she did was uh, on stage in Dublin. There's a thing in Britain called the Mercury Music Prize. Yeah. In Ireland, we call it the Choice Prize. And at Vicar Street in Dublin, she came. Iconic figure. And I thought you summed her up absolutely perfectly. Although I can already hear her ranting about you saying she was Piers Morgan. That would be just about the last <laughs> thing she'd want to hear. But she'd also have a wry smile because she, uh, she and I had a, 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 a bittersweet but always fun uh, relationship. Dave, thank you. I appreciate thank that. You, Look, take it easy.